We're started then, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, we're starting pretty soon. In about 10 minutes, y'all. We're doing this so that you can get your computers ready. You can get your vision thing ready. And Russ will play some. And we're just going to enjoy and worship God today. So we'll be starting in about 10 minutes. Y'all. <laughs> All y'all. All y'all.
it's 11 o'clock. We finally started working, but I know it's time to start. I'm going to give just a second here. And where are we going? Yeah, I got it. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Well, today is Pentecost, and I'm putting a little red scarf here, a uh, pyramid for it. Uh, it's also a fifth Sunday. And as a fifth Sunday, we take up an offering for the children's home. So as you put your tithe in this week, or however you do that, please remember the Florida United Methodist Children's Home in your, um, in your gift. Uh, Monday night, there will be a committee to restart worship meeting. Is it 6.30, right? Yes, sir. 6.30 uh, in the fellowship hall. We'll be working on that. Our plan now is to start next Sunday at 9.30 in the parking lot. And so if you'd like to come out and be a part of the worship in the parking lot, just come on out. We'll be setting up a PA system, and we've got an electric piano for Russ, and uh, we'll just... See how that all goes as we work back into worship. Now, last week I said that I would broadcast this 11 o'clock worship service. Well, next week it's just going to be the 930 service, but the service will be online and will be on the webpage and you'll be able to start it at any time and watch it. So, as we do that, as we're ready to go, I think that uh, if you'd come up and do our centering words, then we shall begin. Good morning. Good morning. Hearts to unconditionally love God and all people. Heads to, to confidently learn God's word and hands to passionately serve. And Russ? Get excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King.
trouble with the uh, computer and perhaps the computer operator, which is me today. So, anyway, let us go now to the time of prayer uh, and let us lift our concerns for ourselves and for others to Almighty God. Gracious God, we lift you our uncertainty about the days to come. And yet, Lord, we know in you things are certain. So help us to give those concerns over to you. That through the power of your Holy Spirit, which we really celebrate this day, you might touch all things and give glory to all things. That through this time we will be so quick to give you the honor and the glory and the praise. Because we do praise you, God. We praise you because you have created us and you have given us life. At creation, you formed Adam from the earth, and he lay before you a marvelous creature of, of bone and of sinew and flesh, but not truly living yet. He's not truly an intentional person until you breathed into him that breath of life. And so it was with the church, Lord. Everything was in place, and Christ has called his followers, and he taught them and trained them, and they were commissioned to take the gospel into the world. The world waited, just one thing remained, that on that first Christian Pentecost, you breathed life into your church, and it came alive, animated by your spirit. And Lord, we read the story in the book of Acts, and it's so exciting about the power that was shown, about the, the flames, and how your spirit fanned those flames, and that fire spread. And we wish today, Lord, for that kind of vigor, that kind of excitement, that kind of, uh, of openness to your spirit in the church today. Lord, 
sometimes we the church just tempted to liken ourselves to the, the valley of bones talking about in Ezekiel and we ask the question can these bones live again but on this day of Pentecost as fire was distributed we remember it was to each of your disciples and so Lord we come today and we pray that your spirit would come to us individually and collectively and at the same time we confess our fear of that spirit because there have been times when people have done some just crazy things claiming to be under the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we're also a little concerned because we know of congregations that have been fractured by what has been called the manifestations of the Spirit. We understand that. We've seen that. We know that, Lord, you send a spirit of unity, not of division. And we also suspect, Lord, that with the empowering of your Spirit comes responsibility. That may frighten us because we are comfortable as we are. But we know we cannot be your church unless we are truly animated, unless we are truly empowered by the fresh winds of your spirit. So Lord, this day give us a new sense of calling. Make, make us desire those spiritual gifts that you would give us to build up the church. Lord, we know you won't set us on fire unless we're willing to burn, so give us ministries that would address the needs of our congregation, give, make us a ministering and prophet, prophet, prophetic presence in this community. Help us to, to, to speak your word aloud throughout the world. But get, help us, Lord, to, get, to keep from getting so caught up in our own idea of what you or what the church ought to be so that we may faithfully serve you and the church and the place where we are and the context we're given. And again, we'll be so quick to give you the honor and the glory and the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us that we could come to you with the confidence of children and pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue with the worship time and open our eyes to the Lord because I want to see you. I want to see you all the time. Open our eyes.
apologize. Um, today I will be reading from Psalm 104, verses 1 through 5 and 30 through 34. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dana. Um, I do have an announcement that uh, my uh, was working with my computer, and the reason it's not working is I'm using Word, and it just told me that my Word had expired or something. So, and I know I bought the whole program when I bought that computer. So, Microsoft is working against us today. <laughs> How many times has that happened, though? <laughs> Uh, would you now pray for me as I pray for you? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill our hearts of your faithful, send forth your spirit, so we shall be created, that you might renew us, that you might renew the face of the earth. Lord, send your spirit into our lives and into this time of worship. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, it's Pentecost. And you know, Pentecost is more than just red pyramids, and it's more than uh, thinking about, we read about how, uh, you know, people spoke in either unknown tongues or different languages. It's more about, in some traditions, they will bring a censer into the church, and they kind of smoke the place up. It's always kind of wondered about people with asthma, but... And they do that. It's so much more than that. It's about the Spirit of God. It's about the Spirit of God bringing creation out of chaos, uh, bringing, uh, breathing into us the breath of life, restoring the joy of our salvation, and inviting us to surrender our lives to God's will. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Because when the Spirit comes, we are created. You know, the psalmist in uh, verse 24 today, we were, didn't read that as part of our lesson, but says, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. You know, we want to be odd today. I think we go to some place like Disney World or um, perhaps uh, Universal. I know that Moira uh, Boltmeyer has already planned out her family's trip to next Disney World, exactly where they were going to have to go. But well, when, when the Hebrews did that, they would go for a walk in the wilderness, or they'd go along the, by the seashore, and the sights there were so imposing. And the psalmist would come, and he'd get so filled with this uh, wonders of God's creation. If you read all of Psalm 104, you see it, it's just a, a canticle to creation. Everywhere the psalmist looked, everything he did, he saw the mighty acts of God. God stretches out the heavens like a tent, and God sets the earth on its foundation. He waters the goats from the mountain springs. He for, for, frolics with whales in the sea. Our God is a creative God. Uh, so you may, it raises the question for me, you know, what moves us from grandiosity, that kind of uh, uh, insensitive kind of, oh, I forgot the word now, but grandiosity to gratitude. What moves us like that? How do you get from being self-centered to Christ-centered? How do you get from just trying to be in charge and be in action, to be in an awe of what God has provided. What really puts your life in a proper perspective? Let the Holy Spirit remind you today that you, that I, that we 
are not the creators of the universe. We are the created of God. So it's not up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to God. Life is to be lived, not by grabbing and gra grabbing at everything, but by being grateful. And the time to start is now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Come and breathe into us the breath of life. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, well, actually more than that, almost 20 years ago now, I had trouble staying awake during the day. I'd sleep all night and wake up just dead tired, didn't know what was going on. I uh, had a Bible study at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'd fall asleep in my own Bible study. I didn't think I was that boring of a teacher, but <laughs> that would happen. So I went back to my doctor, and of course, you, you probably guessed I have sleep apnea. And uh, I would not be breathing for short periods of time. But when I finally got all that taken care of, and had the sleep test and the rest test, and got the mask and the machine, now when I get a good night's sleep, I wake up refreshed. I wake up ready to go. You see, I didn't think much about breathing until I started getting tired. It's not something we think about. Okay? Right now, we, we do it all the time. We're, we're breathing in and we're breathing out. But the psalmist said, every breath we take, every move we make is a gift from God. Verse 29 says, when God hides his face, creation is terrified. When God takes away their breath, they die. God breathes into us that breath of life. And that's how these, this dust, these balls of dust became living beings. So I want to ask you today, I want you to think about this. What has knocked the wind out of you lately? What, what's knocked the breath out of you? Now we know we can say real easily the coronavirus and COVID-19, and that's really knocked the breath out of our world, particularly out of our country. But what is it in your life right now that has knocked the breath out of you? Think about that and see if you can just give that to God. You know, I think about Nicodemus, how he came to Jesus at night, and he uh, was concerned because, you know, he, he, was, he was running out of breath, I think. I think that Jesus had done all these wonderful things, and he knew that he couldn't do those things if God wasn't with him. And he wanted to know about that. He wanted to know about where that power came from. He wanted to know what was going on. And so he went to Jesus at night, really looking for this meaning in life. And what Jesus said was, hey, just stop. Listen to the wind. Be born again. It's the wind, Nicodemus. It's the wind. In the New Testament, the word for wind is pneuma, which means spirit, which means breath, which means air. The problem is, Nicodemus was a little short of breath. You're worn out. Maybe too many night meetings, or maybe too many stressful days, and Jesus didn't come and give him another set of rules, and Jesus didn't give him another thing to work on. He said, just quit trying to do that and be born again. Listen to the Spirit. Listen to the wind. You know, Bob Dylan was right. He said, uh, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Stop trying to control the wind. Let it blow. Be born from above. Try being instead of doing. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. I think about Job in the Old Testament, how the wind was really knocked out of him. I mean, in, in one sweeping disaster, he loses his farm, he loses his family, he loses his assets, he loses all of his uh, accumulations. And towards the end of that book is he's lying naked on the earth. And he, he dares to ask God to answer the riddle of suffering. And he doesn't get an answer. Okay? But he learns this. He says this in, in, in chapter 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. Where is our source of breathlessness today? You know, there's a simple prayer simple prayer that we can pray. It said, breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. Breathe on me, breath of God. Make me more like you. Would you dare to pray that prayer? Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. Breathe on me, breath of God. Of God. Make me more like you. Because, friends, here's good news. That same spirit that turned chaos into creation. The same spirit that breathed into us the breath of life. That 
same spirit can sweep over our being and make us new. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And when the Spirit comes, we are recreated. Now, the psalmist in uh, verse uh, 33 says, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. Are you singing? <laughs> no, are you singing all day long? Is there joy in your step is what I'm asking. Is there a sparkle in your voice? Is there a song in your heart? If not, what has life done to your song? You know, there was a thing on the internet, and it was written by a woman, 85-year-old woman named uh, Nadine Stair. And I did some research on her, and nobody seems to know who she is, and she might even, not even be a real person. But this is a great sentiment that's attributed to her. She said, if I had my life to live over, I would make more mistakes next time. I'd relax, I'd limber up, I'd be sillier than I have been this trip. I would take fewer things seriously. I would take more chances. I would take more trips. I would climb more mountains. I would swim more rivers. I would eat more ice cream and less beans. I would perhaps have actual troubles and fewer imaginary ones. She says, you see, I'm one of those people who live sensibly and sanely hour after hour, day after day. Oh, I've had my moments, and if I had to do it over, I'd have more of those moments. Matter of fact, I try to have nothing else but moments. I've been one of those people who never go anywhere without a thermometer, a hot water bottle, a raincoat, and a parachute. If I had it to do over, I'd travel light, lighter next time. If I had my life to live over, I would start barefoot earlier in the spring and stay that way later in the fall. I would go to more dances. I would ride more merry-go-round. I would pick more daisies. What has life done to your soul? Are you still singing all day long? Do you feel that presence of God working in your life? You see, when the day of Pentecost came and glory came down and joy filled the hearts of those believers, the people outside, when they went out there, thought they were drunk. But Peter replied, these men aren't drunk, as you suppose. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. I often wondered what would have happened if, they, if the Spirit had come at 6 p.m. at night. Yeah. <laughs> but at Pentecost, the Spirit did some transformation there. It turned doubters into believers. It turned the apprehensive into apostles. It turned the, the scared into the sincere. And those doors that were once locked are now open with all sorts of new opportunities and language and culture became blessings instead of barriers. That little band of believers, think about it, that little band of believers under the power of the Holy Spirit found no limits to their vision, no pause in their prayers, no boundaries in the gospel. Can you catch that spirit today? Can you really catch what was happening on the birthday of the church? What a great song they had. What's happened to our song? I think the best thing that could happen to any of us today is for the Lord to send his Holy Spirit into this place, into the place where you are right now. Oh, that he would, he would breathe in our dead bodies that breath of life. That he would fill our sad hearts with the joy of salvation. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Blow like the wind, burn like the fire. Convict, consecrate, cleanse until our hearts are pure and our wills are thine. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Make us more like you. As a simple way to do that, it comes from the simple act of surrender. You know, verse 34 let our meditations be pleasing to you. The word is surrender. Give it all to God. Now, one of my favorite writers or authors was Lord Ogilvy. He was pastor for a long time of the Hollywood, Hollywood Presbyterian Church, and then he was chaplain for the Senate from 1995 to 2003. And he writes in one of his books, he said, For over 30 years, my ministry has focused on helping religious people, religious members, experience spiritual renewal. And he said, people experience renewal differently, but it usually begins in the areas of our lives 
that have been uncommitted to the Lord, and they are brought in to full surrender. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. What would that mean for you today to do that? Maybe some worldly pleasure forsaken. Maybe it would just call for us to have enough humility to humbly bow before God. Why not do it? Why not do it right now? All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. What would that look like in your life right now? You know, someone said spiritual renewal is like remodeling your house. It takes longer than you hoped. It costs more than you planned because it was a bigger mess than you'd ever thought possible. Believe me, we have experience in that, don't we? Yeah, we do. But think about it. God is in the renovation business. What would it mean to surrender your life to the Holy Spirit today? God can restore our soul. If you just let the Holy Spirit come in and take control. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Listen to your children pray. Lord, send your Spirit in this place and listen to your children pray. Send us love. Send us power. Send us grace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. We'll continue with the worship time doing a, a piece, Faithful God, You Sent Your Spirit. It is actually to the tune of Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. committee to restart safe worship or something. I can't. It's a long name. But we're just going to get together and talk about how we can start worship. And that next Sunday, 930 in the parking lot, you can stay in your car and listen or you can get out and bring your own chair. Let me mention too, it'll be Holy Communion. So bring your own juice and your own bread. Bring your own elements. And we won't check what's in your juice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, bring your own elements. And also, on Thursday night, we're back at Tony Now's doing the uh, Jamming for Jesus and raising money for the Food for Kids program. So uh, that's your week, and uh, 
I hope you participate as fully as you can in the life of your church. Right now, receive the benediction. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and among you always. Amen. Thank you.